Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers. I'm looking at a book on uh, parole, parole board hearings. This is this book here, Law and Practice, second edition, by Hamish Arnott and Simon Crichton. It's very much part of the LAG stable of books. Uh, you've got a standard beginning preface and you've got uh, useful paragraph numbers at the sides to try and locate things. You've then got the appendix, which is not a very big one at the back, and then a very useful index to try and find things. It's not an area of law I'm particularly familiar with, to be blunt. Uh, it's an area that I did a little bit of work on when I did my bar exams all those years ago, vocational course. But we've given it, my wife and I, um, Elizabeth and I looked at this, and we decided that the right title would be it's the only book dedicated to covering the decision-making powers and procedures of the Parole Board. Now, we all know what the Parole Board is, and we're well aware of the emotions involved, the highish profile it has, and, of course, the very substantial number of people in custody at the moment, uh, and, and the problems that are building up for the future. So let's have a little, little bit more of a look at this book. As I say, for anybody concerned with civil liberties of prisoners, or indeed anybody concerned with the work of the Parole Board, this LAG publication is a must. And as far as I know, it's the only one that covers this particular function in the sort of detail required. Both Arnott and Crichton, um, I think, have carried on the admirable tradition of LAG publications with this second edition. A lot of um, rigorous research, high standards employed throughout uh, it's easy to use. It's got 14 chapters, 7 appendices, and in that you have the definitive statements, which you need as a sort of practical approach to what one does. It's readable, and it deals with issues such as representation, challenging decisions, assessments, risk, licenses, and so forth. The concept of the parole board is based on the principle as expressed in the introduction that all sentences of imprisonment, save for those few cases where a whole life is all uh, or is made, include a possibility of early release. You think about it, and this is an important political and policy criteria, if you think in those terms. The book then refers to prison overcrowding, which has led to the vast majority of those serving normal, determinate sentences being automatically released on licence. Huge headlines in certain newspapers about this on a regular basis, even in the last few days after we've had this. However, and this is the aspect not fully understood by the public, the mechanisms for release, for release don't involve the parole board. Due to various legislative interventions, the board's role is now focused on the release of prisoners who pose a risk of committing offences of serious harm, most notably those serving life or indeterminate sentences. The authors cite the current reality of over 12,000 people serving indeterminate life sent or life sentences in England and Wales. Uh, it's a figure higher than the rest of Western Europe combined. So you see the problems, I'm sure. Time, therefore, say the authors have come for some genuine blue sky thinking. And also it's time for scrapping, in our view, the concept of the indeterminate sentence, which remains the most unsatisfactory form of sentence for the practical nonsense that it is serving no useful purpose whatsoever. And I make no apologies for saying that, because you've got to think of the practicalities of these people being locked up and, and the problems that this is going to cause. So as the future of the board will now be debated with an incoming government this year, I think the publication is very, very timely. David Latham, who's the chair of the parole board, says the new edition provides perhaps the fullest um, description of the board's present position. And since the first edition was published, significant developments have, of course, have occurred in the parole review process, and new material has been included in this um, publication. Also thinking of um, specifically the parole board amendment rules and various uh, decisions and obviously there are also one other area of course is public funding of parole cases let me conclude by saying that lawyers advisors prisoners and their families 
indeed always working with this sector, I think will welcome the clarity of the um, book. It's thoroughly researched, as to be expected from the two excellent authors, um, and it's a statement of this difficult and complex subject as the only dedicated authority of its kind on parole board powers and procedures. And I think we're all the better for it in these coming troubled times. So thank you to Hamish and to Simon and LAG. Bye-bye.